research for a layman is something that happens in the ivory tower. So one does not feel connected with the terminologies in the research. But when a student takes admission for say PG program or when one starts with the doctoral level research, one cannot escape these terminologies. Then one has to get acquainted with these initial terminologies and only then one can start with the research further. These terminologies may be something like uh, objectives, hypothesis, operational definitions, variables, assumptions. Now these are some of the technical terms that the researcher comes across at the very beginning of the research. And hence it is very essential that the researcher is very well acquainted with every terminology, understand the meaning of every terminology, what to do and what to avoid while using that terminology. All these things should be absolutely clear to the researcher. Only when one is clear about these terminologies, one can go ahead with the clear cut understanding of own research and then move ahead. So in this session, we shall be discussing about these terminologies. We'll be also seeing some of the examples and also we'll be discussing about some of the do's and don'ts about the terminologies. So we uh, begin our uh, session with the terminology that is the operational definitions. We know that lot of efforts go into the process of research. The findings of the research are not only useful for the uh, researchers in that institution, but all the research is referred by all over the nation, sometimes all over the world. So it is very essential that the meaning with which the researcher has written a particular concept is same way it is understood even by the other readers or other researchers. Hence, it is very essential that the terminologies are defined in the same way as that of the researcher and the readers as well. So here comes the importance of the operational definitions. Now we'll see some example and then we will understand the meaning of this terminology in a better manner. Suppose there are variables such as giftedness, academic achievement or effectiveness. Such variables are used in a research. Now the meaning of giftedness may be understood by one person in a certain way while the other person may define the giftedness in some other manner. For example, if somebody may say that if a person gets say a score of uh, 97 to 99 uh, or 100, then one is gifted. Whereas the other person may say if the score of uh, 95 to 100 is obtained, then one is uh, gifted. And if there are variations in the this understanding of the concept of giftedness, then maybe there will be deviations in the analysis, deviations in the uh, further research findings. In order to have the common understanding of the terminology giftedness, the researcher needs to operationally define the term for that particular research. So if the researcher has considered that all the students who are scoring above 97 till 100, then the students will be termed as gifted in that particular research. So even the readers would be clear and it is their responsibility also to understand the terminology giftedness in that frame which the researcher has set for his or her research. Similarly, if a terminology like weaker students appear in the title, then that needs to be operationally defined. And then the meaning of the weaker students would differ from person to person. So here once again, the researcher will have to operationally define the terminology weaker students for that particular research. From this, we can see there are some attributes of the operational definitions. Number one is it has its origin from the theory. So it cannot be deviating from what the theory says, for example, about say weaker students. And the other end of the operational definition is how is the term going to be measured in that particular research. So how the term is going to be measured, how it is going to be observed forms a very, very essential part of the operational definition. Once the operational definition is given, then the researcher is bound with that operational definition and a further complete research work is based on the operational definition 
and a framework that operational definition gives to the researcher. It then becomes even easier for the readers or evaluators to understand the research work in that context or to see the research from that lens which the researcher has picked up for himself or herself. Now while giving this operational definitions, the terminologies are picked up from the research title. The, when the research title is written, the researcher takes a judgment from the title that whose operational definition is needed and those words or at times group of words are picked up for writing the operational definitions. The very purpose of having operational definition is making an ease for the researcher to measure that variable. So the operational definition is very very precise and unambiguous. Unambiguous in the sense that even if some other competent person is to measure that particular variable, that person should be able to measure or classify that particular entity or a group of people in the same manner as the researcher has done. Thus, the operational definitions gives the frame of reference for the complete research work. We will see a few examples. We see an example of a title and a few operational definitions of the important terms from the title. The title is a comparative study of behavioristic and constructivistic techno-andragogy with reference to teacher education. Now if you see this title, there are many terminologies which need to be operationally defined. For the discussion, we have picked up a few of them. But we will see the title, we will see that comparative study needs to be defined. Similarly, what is the difference between behavioristic and constructivistic, those two terminologies also will be required to be defined. Technoandragogy would be required to be defined and even teacher education would be required to be defined. So here in this example, we have picked up two terminologies from the title for operationally defining and we will see some of the characteristics of operational definitions even through these uh, definitions. We shall see some of the operational definitions of the terminologies from the title. Technoandragogy, application of andragogical principles to teaching learning process through web 2.0 tools. Now when we see this term techno-andragogy, we are, one is familiar with the terminology technology, one is also familiar with the terminology andragogy. So in this case while the terminology techno-andragogy has been coined, the attributes of technology are also mixed with the attributes of the andragogy and thus the definition is formed. But even in technology, the researcher here has considered only web 2.0 tools. So those appear in the definition. We will see the other example, comparative study. Now why do we need to define the term comparative study? It is possible that suppose three persons are looking at the same research, looking at the same comparison. Person A may come up with three attributes, person B may come up with say another two or four attributes, person C may come up with say another set of attributes. So in order to fix the attributes which the researcher has taken into consideration for his or her research, it is essential that the terminology like comparative study is defined. So here the definition is comparison on the aspects like teaching performance, cognition, metacognition, interactivity during technoandragogical treatment and reaction of student teachers to the technoandragogical experiences. So here we see in definition that there were these five aspects were chosen by this researcher. But it is not necessary that another uh, research is conducted on the same line. That researcher will also have to take only these five aspects. He or she can take some other aspects as well for comparison. So here as we see in both the definitions, how exactly the term will be defined and actually measured, observed in case of that particular research is very, very clear cut mentioned. We will see one more example, 
Now here is the title is the study of mental ability of standard 8 students in ZP schools. Now uh, in this case the terminology mental ability will be required to be defined. Now here is an example where the researcher has defined operationally but for defining it operationally he has used the definition or the standard that is chosen by somebody else. Now for measuring mental ability Ravens has devised a tool called as standard progressive matrices. Now in this case the researcher has decided to accept the scores of this standard progressive matrices for deciding the mental ability and therefore the operational definition of mental ability in this research goes like mental ability as measured by Raven's standard progressive matrices. So here is another possibility of giving the operational definition where the researcher accepts somebody else's standard for his research and then declares that that this is my operational definition for this particular research. We shall discuss some of the mistakes that are made while writing the operational definitions. First mistake could be giving only the final definition without giving the theoretical background for it. Let us take an example of say terminology intelligence. Now intelligence is defined by many psychologists in different manners. There are many intelligence tests so maybe they would be defining the terminology in their own ways. So the researcher needs to first understand and even at times give this theoretical background of the terminology intelligence before one attempts to operationally define it. In this case there are two possibilities. The researcher may say that operational definition of say X intelligence test has been accepted as it is for this particular research or maybe the researcher can say that if one has considered the marks of say previous exam as the indicator of intelligence then even that possibility is there. But whichever modality is adopted it is the researcher's responsibility to give the theoretical definitions of the other researchers or maybe the other psychologists before the operational definition comes. The other mistake sometimes made is the researcher gives the definition of the terminology. Yes, but one does not indicate how the terminology or how that variable will be measured. The very uh, existence of operational definitions is with the purpose that it should be clear that how that variable will be measured. So unless this aspect of the measurement or how it will be observed is uh, mentioned in the definition, the definition is not clear or rather we can say it will not be even a operational definition. Imagine that the word like terminology is to be operationally defined and a researcher gives only theoretical definitions that personality is a collection of all the attributes that a person carries. Fine, theoretically it may be a right definition but then it does not indicate how the personality will be measured in case of this particular research. So such kind of mistakes need to be avoided by the researcher. Sometimes in the attempt of giving operational definitions of the key terms from the research title, the researcher lands up defining every possible word in the title. So in this attempt at times it happens that the terminologies which are not so important or they need not be really operationally defined or need not be known that how it is to be measured even those definitions are given. We will see an example that suppose it is a study of say reasons of absenteeism. Now in this case reasons one does not need to define the terminology reason because we all have a common understanding about the terminology of reasons and could be the list of factors that have their impact on something happening. In this case the factors that lead to absenteeism. So that much clear understanding about the terminology reasons is sufficient and one does not need to give the 
operational definition of the terminology like regions. We will see one more type of mistake that happens in the in case of operational definitions. Imagine the terminology like audio visual aids. Now the term audio visual aids is formed from various uh, terms like say audio, video, then audio visual and audio visual aids. So, in this case if the researcher starts giving the operational definitions of what is audio, then video, audio visual and then comes to audio visual aids, it will be absolutely unnecessarily and uh, it will be really deviating from the main definition of audio visual aids. So, especially while giving the definitions of such terms which are formed with the help of two or three more words, then no need to give, go into the fractional words and then come to the final words. In this case one should directly give the definition of the terminology audio visual aids. So, this is another kind of mistake that the researcher makes in operational definitions. Now, thus we saw that in operational definitions that is the first term that the researcher comes across as soon as the research title is fixed and unless the clear understanding of which terminology needs to be defined and how they will be defined, how they will be measured, what bearing it has on the further connections. All these things get clear to the researcher once all the operational definitions are put in as detail as possible. In some other session we shall be discussing about the experimental research, but in that one of the threats to the external validity is the poorly defined operational terms. So, the term which are to be defined right in the beginning has so much implication and so much bearing on the various other decisions in the research or the rigor of the research as well. Hence, it is very very essential that the researchers pays keen attention to the detailing of the operational definitions right from the beginning and thus his rest of the path will fall in place.